Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Can everyone hear me? Soldier? Just let me know in chat if the uh, audio and everything's good real quick. The music's too loud or if I'm too loud, just let me know. Okay, you can hear me, that's good. Just need to make sure the audio's fine before... Everything's fine? Okay. All right, guys, um, I just texted you, Memmi, so she should be here soon, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started, so welcome, guys. This is The Fruit of Grisaya. This is one of my all-time favorite visual novels. I, It's one of the first ones I read. My first one was Katawa Shoujo. I really like that one. Uh, it's probably still my favorite, but this one is a close, 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 close close second like it is phenomenal um so how i'm going to be doing this is i'm going to be reading for the main character and his thoughts but everyone that has a voice i'll uh just let their voice play and you all can uh read the stuff i'll leave the uh, text up there long enough for you to read but if you want me to um if you need me to read something, or if you need me to rewind, just let me know, and I can do that for you, okay? Just need to get all that out of the way first. So, alright, without further ado, we're going right from the beginning. Intense sunlight blazes down on the road as if to declare the arrival of summer. The burning asphalt radiates heat, mixing with the scent of the tide to, to form a thick, muggy atmosphere. It's way too early for this kind of weather, and when the temperature is abnormally high, you're always going to get some people who lose their heads and start acting erratically. In other words, it's only natural that the police would be on the lookout for suspicious types at times like these. It was about ten minutes ago that I realized I'd been mistaken for one of those heat stroke addled sorts. I need the stupid Arceus. Maybe Arceus is a visual novel fan. It will draw him out. Let's hope, man. Hmm. Sweat pouring from his forehead as he exa examines my license, the policeman in front of me takes a glance at the large backpack I'm carrying, then continues the background check. Yes. I told you this ten minutes ago. I'm moving. This luggage is everything I own. Like I said, I don't have one yet. The answer's not gonna change no matter how many times you ask. Mammy, we just started. And I, I freaking, uh, I messaged you on Twitter. I messaged you on Twitter. Didn't you, didn't you see my DM? I, I DM'd you on Twitter. <laughs> didn't I? I'm pretty sure I did. I'm here to cause chaos. But, Memmy, listen, listen, don't worry. We literally just started. Like, I've literally gotten through five text boxes. You're good, okay? So, Memmy, uh... Now that you're here, I can uh, kind of re-explain. So basically what I'm doing is um, I'm voicing the main character and his thought boxes. 
but for every character that has a voice, I'm going to let that play and leave the text hanging for like a little bit and let y'all read that. So I can kind of like, uh, submerge Memmy Wow getting here late, huh? Ravon, thank you for coming! Ah, oh, thank you, Ravon. Uh, <laughs> y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. I miss the. <laughs> Shut up, Mimi. Okay. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on going, but uh, like I just said to Mimi, I'm basically just voicing the main character and his thoughts, but everyone that has a voice, I'm just letting them say their stuff and letting y'all read the text box, and I'll leave it hanging for a little bit, and then I'll move on. So, that's, that's how it works. Okay. Where did you come from? Where are you going? What are you planning to do there? Depending on the context, these could be fairly phys philosophical questions, but as far as the police inquiries go, they're pretty run-of-the-mill. From their perspective, anyone wandering around without clear-cut business is by default a criminal of some sort. Let alone someone like me, carrying around conspicuous, bulky luggage. It's, it's as good as guaranteed that they'd stop me. That is their job, I suppose, since this little scene acts as a crime deterrent through its visibility. It's not an entirely wasted effort. But unfortunately, I don't have all day to play along. I drop a glance toward the digital watch I'm wearing uh, around my left wrist. Hi, Mots. <laughs> Hi, Mimi. <laughs> Moots. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm keeping someone waiting. I really can't spare any more time for hanging out with bored cops. A bored police force is proof that city's at peace. Take it as a compliment. Inexplicably, inexplicably taking offense at my tone, the policeman clicks his tongue in irritation and tosses my license back. Yeah. I refuse. I mean, I refuse. Mochi and members. どうして何か見られたくないものでも入ってるの刃物とか持ってない <laughs> Uh, Mammy, you and Ravon can see everything good, right? Like, everything's good, all audio's good and stuff. Just make it, just double checking. Yep, okay, good, good. I really, I don't rely on blades. Policy of mine. Look, are you really telling me to unpack all this on the spot? It'll take an hour at least. 30 minutes just to take it all out, 30 minutes to stuff it back in. You sound clear, hell yeah. I just told you, I don't have the time. I can't accept voluntary questioning. I know you can't just back down in this situation, but if I say I'll head over there myself later, could we wrap this up for now? As I've explained, I'm in the middle of a move, I've vacated my old place, so I don't have an address. I don't have any parents, no siblings or relatives either. They're all dead. This is going nowhere. By the way, guys, tell me if I'm moving the text boxes too fast for the ones that you guys have to read. Uh, and I'll uh, try to keep on them for a little longer. Then at least let me call the person I'm supposed to be meeting. At this rate, they'll be waiting all day. Talk
rap. I'm not. Okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna tell you. Okay, no, no I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, I feel like it. I'm not going to tell you that. It's your mother. We had an appointment at the hotel tonight. Ooh, <laughs> Chadji, freaking Chadji. <laughs> I forgot that this was a lie. <laughs> huh? I was keeping quiet out of the goodness of my heart. You dragged it out of me, buddy. So don't blame me when your parents get divorced and your happy home is shattered. <laughs> About 30 meters away from where we're talking, someone screams. A desperate cry follows within seconds. A woman sits collapsed on the street, stretching out her hand. Her high heels lie on the ground, knocked off her feet by the sudden fall. Just about halfway between us, there's a man in a flashy Hawaiian shirt running in this direction. Although the thief flinches for a moment at the sight of the police man's uniform, after a quick check for any convenient side streets, he barrels onward. Brandishing the stolen bag menacingly, his hand violently gestures, Out of my way! The cop is completely flustered. He's quite clearly unaccustomed to this sort of situation. While he's panicking, the distance between us and the thief shrinks with surprising swiftness. The man runs in a straight line towards a breakthrough to freedom. I happen to be standing directly in the middle of his path. As he prepares to strike with the bag, I ascertain the movement of his shoulder and arm from the first signs of motion and hit his wrist sharply just as he begins to swing. The man's arm instantly stiffens and loses all momentum. His eyes pop wide open in shock. I immediately grab the collar of the Hawaiian shirt he's wearing and firmly draw him toward me. Before the man can offer resistance to my pull, I smoothly reverse and use my body weight to shove against him. When pushed just as they've begun to brace themselves against being pulled, anyone except a genuine expert is going to be thrown off balance. Nice shirt. Where'd you buy it? Oh no, this is where, this is where I have to act like a badass. Oh god, everyone's gonna freaking roast me. Shock spreads across the man's face as his knees buckle against his will. I try to get a chokehold using my grip on the neck of his shirt, but... The man promptly drops, draws his head back and shifts his body to the side, preventing me from landing a hold on his neck. Although I expected as much from a glance at his build, it seems like he's somewhat experienced in judo. But, in this case, you would have been better off trying a decisive tackle. <laughs> Rotating around the purse snatcher in the opposite direction of his slide, I yank his right arm upward with both hands in one movement. I've circled to his back. <laughs> Next, pull back on the opponent's wrist and elbow and pin him to the ground. This is just basic Aikido, by the way. Hey now, you've got your priorities all wrong. Before worrying about me, you should kill the guy who sold you that shirt. Main boy is a boss, hell yeah. Perhaps unconsciously, the man's now empty right hand desperately slaps at the asphalt. While holding the thief pinned, I quickly shoot a look behind me. Don't just stand there! Uh, uh, oh! The policeman jerks up straight in response to my angry shout. Taking a pair of handcuffs from the pouch around his waist, he runs over to restrain the criminal. The purse snatcher seems to have resigned himself to his fate, and he doesn't offer any pointless resistance. He accepts his red-handed arrest for theft docilely, then sits quietly on the ground with his head hung as the policeman radios for backup. 
Apparently they weren't too far off as a siren approaches in no time. Ow, 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 oh, oh, that was so loud. Was that loud for anyone else or was that just me? I think I need to lower the volume. How do I... Yeah, no, no, how do I pull up the menu? Oh, there we go. Uh, I think it would be this one. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, two policemen get out of the arriving cruiser and push the criminal into the back seat. I thought there was a cop outside. As I'm quietly watching the scene in perfect passivity, the policeman from earlier runs over. <sighs> <laughs> the siren made me think the con was getting shut down. Oh god. <laughs> I'll pass on the letter of thanks, so how about letting me move on? そうも行かんのですよ。戦国の件も含めてできれば改めて書でお話を聞かせていただきたいのですが。Figured <sighs> as much. Shaking my head in exasperation, I silently rebuke myself. Should have just left it alone. As the policeman pushes at my back, a glance at my wristwatch informs me that I'm already five minutes late for my meeting. Nah, you're just going to Thirty minutes have passed since I was brought to the interrogation room, familiar as the place where criminals break into flop sweat and TV dramas. I'm sitting on a cheap foldable pipe chair, my arms folded in perfect silence. So Instead of responding, I close my eyes, a silent statement indicating that I absolutely have no intention of opening my mouth. The detective clicks his tongue in exasperation at my attitude. I've got a pretty fair idea of what, I'll, of what he'll be doing next. The sound of something being struck and an even louder attempt at intimidation uh, this is the point where a timid guy would be jumping in his seat with his eyes wide open, or maybe staring at the floor and quivering. As for me, my eyes are still shut and my arms are still folded quietly. My mind is a total blank. I've been accustomed to adults shouting me like this since I was a child. If I disappear, it's because my phone... No worries, Mammy. Following the threat stage... Living life on the edge. <laughs> Following the threat stage, the next step would be for him to grip my hair and jolt me back and forth. But I'm dealing with an official authority group here. I should get off without direct violence towards it. Direct violence this time. Not to say that they won't pull out the old TV cliches and harass me by shining a desk clamp in my eyes or something of the sort. I can roughly translate the detective sigh. Goddamn kids these days. <laughs> I gently open my eyes in order to sneak a look at his disgusted face. The detective sitting in front of me seems to be challenging the Guinness World Record for most dramatic asymmetry between the left and right sides of a human mouth. Or maybe he's just scowling. When I let out a snort of laughter in response to the unexpectedly pleasant sight, the detective scratches his head violently and glares at me. <laughs> Won't gain you anything, but you won't lose anything either, except your time. I turn my gaze to the clock on the wall of the sweat box. An hour has already passed since the scheduled time for my meeting. The detective strikes the decks desk with excellent comic timing. 
The best part is the way he knocks his ashtray off the table every time he does this. His tone distinctly fed up. He stoops down to pick the plastic tray off the floor. Kazami Yuji. Occupation. Student. だから、それはもう何度も聞いたっつんだよ。調べたよ。山梨から来たんだろ。箱の犯罪歴はなし。歩道歴も交通違反もなし。何かを表彰されるようなこともなし。ここまで綺麗な賞罰なしってのは変だ
ご存知かと思いますが上があれですからいろいろとややこしくてね<笑> uh, no, just that my Mew made it so Arceus won't be shiny. I still count the 3,600 I did before, but none of them could have been shiny, so I'm like a thousand actual encounters. Okay. Sarcasm drifting from every pore of his body, the detective treats me with transparently insincere courtesy. He's perfectly civil on a superficial level, but the atmosphere in, in here is growing increasingly unpleasant. The younger detective from before, hard ass that he was, seems infinitely preferable. Did you inquire to Ichigaya, Ichigaya about me? いいえね。あなたのお名前をデータベースで検索させたんですがね。検索している最中に電話が鳴りまして、受話器を上げてみたら防衛省の特別の機関からのお電話でして。Okay, I'm gonna try to do a more like gruff voice of Yuji. うちの犬がそちらで保護されていないかと聞きましてね。いや、驚きましたよ実際。うちは保健所じゃありませんからね。Since you found my owner and confirmed that my leash is properly attached, I should be able to leave now, right? ええ、どうぞご自由に。ああ、そうさ。あなたが今度転入なさる学園の学園長からもこちらに連絡がありましたよ。That's、uh... Yes, but since Ben said you'd get it, I, I, I believe it. Ben is the authority on Shinies. おかげでうちの所長も会議の途中で電話に引っ張られたようでして、三罪闇を言われたと言っておりました。Where's my backpack? お預かりした荷物は玄関に出してありますのでそちらで。何でしたらうちの車でお送りしましょうか。You're not getting funds from public taxes in order to show four bums like me around, are you? I'll walk. After I'm urged out the door by the old man, the young detective appears from the rear, carrying the backpack they'd taken from me earlier. Bit of a tough question. I guess you could say, my life? That wasn't really what I was going for. Dropping the backpack next to me, the detective lets out a slight sigh. Thanks for lugging it out here. Pretty heavy, isn't it? True. Guess that's natural for a policeman. Sorry about that. The detective smiles wryly. I'm wearing the school uniform, you can see at a glance. He clasps my shoulder as we pass each other. With those parting words, he heads back into the police station. Guess I don't make a convincing student yet. I'm wearing black slacks and a short sleeve dress shirt, as well as blue tartan check necktie. Excluding my somewhat longish hair, I should be the very image of a student. I guess it's a little difficult turning into something like that all of a sudden. But it's probably precisely because this is difficult that I decided to give it a try. For a while, I myself didn't understand why I'd ask for this, but now, 
I think I have a faint grasp on the reason. I wanted to become something that I couldn't understand, something that I wasn't. At that, at the moment, I've done nothing but smooth down my edges a bit. Perhaps later on I'll become a student on the inside as well. The sun that had been climbing upward earlier has now finally reached its zenith. The temperature keeps on rising and sweat oozes from my skin. I was pretty sure she'd pick me up, but... Huh? Sensing a presence, I lowered my gaze from the sun. My eyes, well accustomed to high contrast lighting, project a human form and silhouette for only the briefest of moments before the details fade in. A woman raising an awkward salute, grinning badly, stands before my eyes. Spare me, I don't want to see a pose like that outside the workplace. In the first place, what's with that dopey salute? The girls in bikinis on the uh, Martami SDF recruitment posters have more impressive form. I don't recall contributing enough to society to deserve any appreciation. She opens the door of the car stopped next to her. Yeah, true enough. From Mishima Cape Police Station to National Highway 133 southbound, we prepared to we proceed to the prefectural highway and advance further out toward the Cape. A range of slowly rotating wind turbines come into view, indicating our proximity to the sea. I doubt you really thought I was sick. You were trying the police stations first, not the hospitals. Accuracy in weather forecasts and interpersonal communications make society run smoother. Pouting again, she continues her harang? Harang? I think. Daichi,ここにだって本数は少ないけど電車は通ってるんだから、それで来ればよかったのに歩いてきちゃうんだもん。それも聞いてびっくりしたのよ。ヒマラヤにでも登るような大荷物背負ってるって。Sorry, I hate trains. Could you not mention this to the other students? I don't want them getting funny ideas about me from the get-go. I got enough of that from the police to last me a while. <laughs> The car proceeded about 500 meters along an area of reclaimed coastal land before she brought it to a stop. So that's what he meant by landfill. I see. As I'm recalling the words of the detective from before, the woman continues on her conversation with a suddenly cheerful tone. <laughs> Very nice. Barely even looks like a school. Although I'd heard it was a new school, its external appearance genuinely isn't what I had expected. 
A three-story building, the pure white color of the outer walls is the only typical school-like element, with every other aspect more closely resembling a city office building. The gates to the right and left are less evocative of a school gate than a functional fence at some facility. The mounted signboard, likewise, is a utilit util utilitarian whatever thing printed in a simple typeface rather than a hand-drawn work of calligraphy. I've only just arrived at this place. If I said I was deeply moved by this sight, it'd be a lie. With an exaggerated sh sigh, she opens her hands wide in the overblown gesture of a third-rate actor. <laughs> Her rigmarole is abruptly interrupted by the high-pitched shrieks of two girls. Maybe that'll help. I, I agree, soldier. <laughs> Normal? Could you define that term? Is there a class where we chase each other around brandishing insects? I don't think I do, but it's nice to see that it's lively at school. Apparently having forgotten what she was planning to do with her outspread hands, she totters through the school gate. <laughs> I hope you're I hope you're enjoying the uh, madness so far, soldier. <laughs> I gotta turn off the ringer on my phone, hold on. Her office is positioned quite near the school building's front entrance. The furniture is nicely arranged based around an old-fashioned desk and chair. In contrast to the incongruity of the building's external appearance, this room is a textbook example of the old-fashioned principal's office. I sit on the genuine leather sofa that's one of the room's more prominent furnishings. After waiting for me to settle myself, she lowers herself into the seat across from me. BRB, gotcha. Gakuencho On a practical level, nice to meet you might be the better option. <laughs> so, 
With a slight amused smile, Principal Tachibana takes out a pamphlet. She flips past a couple of pages of the brochure. I hadn't noticed, but her fingernails are lightly polished. ここは学校法人 the principal's talk shifts to a more detailed matters. The East Beach, the East Beach Express is an enormous corporate group with its hands in real estate and large-scale retail, but its core business is the management of the rail line connecting Tokyo and Hanada Airport. The EBE's management is soldiered by, shouldered by the Sakaki family, and it seems plausible that this Sakaki Academy Corporation is also administered by them directly, but that's only a guess based on circumstantial evidence. Welcome back, soldier. You didn't miss much. There's a lack of public information on the secretive corporation's uh, activities. The very existence of this academy isn't well known. I didn't gain anything that could be called definitive proof from my investigation so far. Her fingers come to a stop, bringing her hands gently together. The principal raises her gaze from the pamphlet and meets my eyes. I have a few questions. First, today is a weekday, but there was barely anyone on the school grounds. What's going on? Only six? The elite few. Eh? That include our friends with the cicada just now? Mochiro. Question two. Where am I living from the day on? A dormitory, is it? In that case, not a problem. Before we finish, one last thing. For this last question only, I stare directly into her eyes. I need to confirm the principal's intentions in bringing me here. After all said and done, is this a normal school? <laughs> the principal closes her mouth. After a moment of silence, she opens it again. <laughs> a gentle smile. I'm convinced that she isn't lying to me further to further some so hidden self-interest. <laughs> The principal slowly stands up and walks to the window, side. The athletic grounds are visible from the window. Although resembling those of a normal school, the grounds are skirted by an improbably high wall. The mere handful of students, the bizarrely extravagant facilities, the on-campus dormitory, the high surrounding wall, the high wall surrounding it all. They clearly indicate abnormality. But, you know, you know, 
ここしか条件に合うところがなかったのよ I guess you're、right. 私はあくまでもここは普通の学園だとあなたに言います The principal turns to face me. だからあなたもここで普通に過ごしてくれればいいわ何かしてほしいとか私から言うことはありません、Understood. それじゃ寮の方へ案内するわ Yeah. With a nod, I rise to my feet. On the grounds outside, a, gusty, a gust of salty sea air kicks up a cloud of sand. The cicada pair from earlier don't seem to be around. That Komine guy, a student here too? その子に寮の案内を頼んでいたんだけど姿が見えないから、so、you don't have a minute grasp a minute grasp on the movements of the students I see 私はほら単なる学園長だから Merely, is it? ちょっと待ってね部屋にいるのかもしれないから The principal walks towards the interior of the building. Left there by myself, I stare vacantly at the ceiling. Soon, I've unconsciously fallen into the habit of counting the number of visible, visible sprinklers, then roughly estimating the scale of the building, calculating the time needed to gain control of the front entrance, and ascertaining the location of the emergency exits. Hmm, not that many support pillars, are there? I guess that's why the ceiling is a bit low. <laughs> Having grown absorbed in analyzing the building, I don't even notice the tug at my sleep. Until the final excuse me of many finally catches my ear. Hmm? I drop my gaze in the direction of the voice and find a girl in house made clothes looking up at me. Not that she's of particularly diminutive height, except in comparison to a taller male like me. No one's going to admit that they're an intruder if you ask them point blank. The maid nods several times, slowly closes her eyes, and begins to repeat my words. Flexible thinking isn't your strong suit, clearly. No, never mind. So, what does a maid want with me? Um, 
This would be the second time today I've heard that pickup line. You're a lot tougher than you look, maid. At this point, having noticed our voices, the principal calls out to the girl. It seems this maid was Komine all along. I'm Kazami Yuji. Good to meet you. I don't think you introduced yourself. And this time it's nothing but the first name. Mm -hmm. I had this thought earlier with the other two, but you've certainly gathered some unique elites here. Which would mean that she's a student too? It's not really my point of confusion here. Our uniform creates certain pre preconceptions. For example, if I see a girl wearing bunny ears in a bar, I don't ask what she's done with her Bible. That's not an explanation. わかりました。えっと、私は暮らすいいを任されている関係でよく先生方のお手伝いや雑用をお願いされることが多いのですが。なんだかメイドさんみたいだねという話からちょっとメイド服着てみなよと促され。実際着てみたらやっぱり似合うからなるべく普段から着た方がいいよと提案されたのでなるべく普段からメイド服を着るように心がけていますI see you're uh, a devoted one that fallen bunny girl sister could learn a thing or two from you はいありがとうございます I wasn't really intending that to be a compliment, but there's no point in telling her that. No objections. Yeah, if you would. The maid slowly begins to walk, but quickly comes to a stop in front of the management room. Stop dead, she's staring at me with an expression that clearly indicates she has something to say. What's wrong, you need something? Come to think of it, you're right. Well, you can call me whatever you want. それでしたら、ゆうくんと呼ばせていただいてもよろしいでしょうか。We've gotten pretty familiar all of a sudden. では、風見さんというのはいかがでしょう。Sure. Anyway, I'll call you Sachi. Sachi. My bad, would Sachimon be better? Her expression didn't change in the slightest, but her eyes at the moment she spoke those words had a strange forcefulness. 
That's so. Alright. Sachi. Best regards and all that. Hi. Judging from her smile, it seems she doesn't dislike being called Sachi. So, Nameplate seems to say it's the management room, though. In other words, she wants me to play the prison guard? Well, at the very least, three out of the six students living in this dorm are females. It would probably be prudent to have a, a room as far as possible from theirs to avoid potential trouble. Mind if I take a look inside? When I open the door with the key she hands me, a prominently placed set of kitchen and household goods catches my eyes. They seem to be in good shape, and I can confirm with a glance that the room itself will be a more than adequate living environment given my needs. Got it. She seems to have guessed my thoughts from the direction of my gaze. Hmm. As a little test, I focus my eyes on a different point of interest, and she provides an explanation in the same way. Although she's a little off in some departments, she seems to be pretty sharp in her other request respects. I see. Looks like there won't be any problems. As I speak, I twist the faucet over the sink. Was someone using this room before I came? The water's pretty clear, considering. まあ、建物自体新しいですし。風見さんがいらっしゃる前はこの部屋を倉庫代わりに使用することもあったので、その時に誰かが水道を使っていたのかもしれません。私も時々お掃除の時にバケツの水を汲むために使っていましたから。I see. I twist the faucet to stop the water, drop the luggage I've been carrying on the spot, and promptly leave the room. それから、玄関を入って正面のスペースは、みんなの共有の場所になっています。The standard student dorm community space, is it? はい。マキちゃんやアマネさんなんかは、よくここで過ごしていますよ。That's so. Uh, although I haven't heard those names before, they must be other students. それから、風見さんの部屋の隣は、ボイラー室。その正面が階段で、その奥には、4つの部屋があって、階段の隣の3号室が、私の部屋になります。I heard there are 11 rooms in total. Any reason why you picked one on the first floor? それは私の名前がサチなのでサッチャンなら3号室でしょ と I get the idea ここが2階です 2階は基本的に部屋のみの構造となっていて私以外の学生さんは全員この階に住んでいます Which would mean the two of these are vacant はい 7号室と9号室は現在空き部屋になっています。3階はこの大浴場をはじめとした戦闘的な構造になっています。階段の反対側にはコインランドリーや物干しスペースもあるので必要な時に利用してください。もし、選択自体が苦手なようでしたら、私に言っていただければ代行しますので。Wouldn't taking care of someone else's chores be a nuisance? クラス委員ですから。
All right. I'll keep that offer in mind. Hi. There's no reason to refuse outright when the offer is delivered with such an earnest smile. By the way, can we use this grand bathroom as we please? Hi. As she speaks, she hands me a card that reads, In use, male bathing. Sure, I think I might take advantage of it pretty often. The view up here is pretty nice. そうですね。周りには校舎の他に高い建物もないですし、ガラスの透過率も75%ですから、海面に沈む夕日を眺めることもできますよ。エンオーシャンビューハ。まあ、バッド。ご希望ならすぐに入ることもできますけど。As I see. The fruit of your experience, is it? What's wrong? えっと、Kazami-san のための着替えではなく、私の着替えを持ってきてしまいました. As if to demonstrate, female underwear <laughs> slips out from among the clothes in Sachi's hand. Is this a declaration that you want to bathe together? <laughs> I really don't think there's anything to apologize for. Let's see. Can I ask about something other than the dorm? In that case, let's hear your three sizes, Sachi. はい。上から82、56、83です。She <laughs> just, just lays it out in the open. At the moment, is there a specific man you're going out with? Your experience with men today? Hmm. I know I'm the one who asked you those questions, but answering them so politely, would that also be because you're the class representative? What an admirable devotion to customer service. Nothing comes to mind. わかりました。もし他に聞きたいことができたら、部屋にある内線電話で3番を押してください。私の部屋につながるので。with that note of farewell, Sachi bows like a genuine housemaid and starts to turn away. Ah, uh, Sachi! Hi. Thanks for the tour. I appreciate it. Hi. Hmm. The class representatives these days sure seem to be a surprisingly tough will to breed. After Sachi's tour ended, I took another look around the interior of the building on my own. By the time I returned to my room, the sun is already low in the sky and the light turned growing dim. Should probably put the stuff away before it gets dark. Opening my backpack, I pull out the contents and begin to put them away on the shelves I've been provided with. It's a real help that I've got a closet. Things I can leave in a visible place and things to be stowed away in the back. Dividing my possessions between the two, the latter are clearly more numerous. Normal, huh? While looking over... 
gonna buy an NFT of Shiny Arceus so I can prove that I own it. That's that's a gamer move right there, soldier. While looking over my mountain of luggage, I mutter in a self-deprecating tone. As I work, the sun sinks leisurely into the sea. At my usual time, 4.45 a.m., I woke up in my usual way and ran the course I'd marked down mentally on my way here. To tell the truth, when I was stopped by the policeman yesterday, it was because I'd been wandering back and forth in the same place. I'd been planning out a possible marathon route, in other words. I woke at the usual time, ran at the usual time, and now I'm eating my breakfast at the usual time. No different from the days when I was living together with my master in the mountains, my standard tempo of living. If there is a difference, it's limited to the slight surprise I felt when I opened my eyes and found a roof over my head. During my hike from Yamanashi, I'd gotten used to sleeping in the open, so when I woke up inside a room, there was a slight feeling of unease as I thought. Right, I'm living in a dorm now. The, that mild discomfort hasn't disappeared even now as I'm eating my corn cereal. It's hard to settle down inside a new lair until it's ingrained with your scent. Even so, I'll start living at this tempo every day from now on, going to school every morning so there's no real need to rush things. Even if I actively spend every day packing myself with potentially useful knowledge, someday this sort of lifestyle might come naturally to me. The effort strikes me as a little troublesome, but as my master once told me, when it comes to your life and your women, a little bit of trouble is just about right. <laughs> so, soldier, keep that in mind. That's that's good advice. Keep that in mind. Keep that in your noggin. <laughs> Speaking of women, they're a simple bunch, but that doesn't make them any less difficult to handle. <laughs> I learned that much in my first year of living with my master. In my master's words, When you're a brat, running fast is enough to make you popular. When you're a middle schooler, the guys who can fight will be popular, and after that, it's the guys with brains who get the girls. <laughs> Wait, what? In other words, run, punch, and read books, and you'll never run dry. What do you think? Short and sweet, right? That was her theory, at least. The things she said was always ridiculously simplistic. Honestly, I ignored those words with a snort the first time I heard them, but my master was a woman who put her beliefs into practice. Every morning she made me run, and every day she hit me with a stack of books. Although I don't know if she's to blame, I still run 16 kilometers every morning and habitually read books whenever I have free time. Sometimes she was harsh, sometimes she was sweet. She would emit an abrasive, overpowering aura at times. Every once in a while she could be so gentle that I thought my brain would melt out my ears. That was my master, a woman with a sizable build who was nonetheless very picky about the little things. I've had a hard time dealing with large women ever since those days, but being aware of that fact doesn't mean I can fix it. It's not that I dislike them on a conscious level, but whenever I see a tall woman I can't help but feel wary out of pure instinct. If you ask why I'm bringing this up all of a sudden, well, that would be because I've just been reminded that there's a large woman at this school as well. Since this place is a student dormitory, a dormitory, it's a, of course only natural that a community of students would already be living here. It's entirely probable that they have their own rules that I don't know of yet. Also, I'm a country hick fresh from the rural areas of Yamanashi. So it goes without saying I'm poorly versed in the customs and rituals of this land. I have no way of penetrating the depths of significance that might be hiding in an action that, at a glance, looks to be a simple case of bullying. What game's this? What are the rules? Huh? 
The puzzled faces staring back at me are familiar. It's the little girl slash big woman combo I arbitrarily named the Cicada Sisters when I first arrived at the school yesterday. Who do you think? That's so. I suppose that means I'm irredeemably stupid. Please call me Moron Boy, as if we've been friends for ten years, Cicada Sisters. I saw the pair of you from the gate yesterday. One of you was swinging a cicada around, and the other was shrieking, if I remember correctly. Hmm. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, Kazami Yuji. Good to meet you. I thrust out my right hand, but the tall woman in front of me doesn't show any sign of grasping it. She stiffened on the spot, staring fixedly at my face. Looks as though she's for even forgotten to breathe. Something wrong? The big woman's frozen expression suddenly melts and she lightly shakes my hand. It's an unexpectedly small but decidedly cold hand. Sorry, I'll be in and out of the stream today. No worries, uh, Mammy. No worries. Girls are so cute. They are pretty cute. I like the uh, my the maid's my favorite one. <laughs> Iris Machina? Iris is a Greek god, and isn't Machina a Lat word? Literally translated, it would be something like Mecha Rainbow Goddess. Can you date? Yeah! All of the girls you've seen so far, except the principal Mimi, you can date all of them. Well, like, you go down the route and you end up with them, basically. What country are you from? Wasn't she speaking English just now? Ah,この子、言語やがちょっとね。それに親の都合で六歳まで海外を飛び回ってたから。I see. Well, good to meet you. <laughs> Staring at my outstretched hand in silence, Makina clings to Amane's back as if trying to hide herself. What's wrong? Uh, Hmm. I withdraw the hand I'd been holding out toward Makina. There's no need to force her to deal with me in the first place, I guess. Is don't get any snacks supposed to be an effective threat this day and age? Or so I thought. But hearing those words, Makina bites her lip tightly and extends her right hand toward me with a strained expression. I gently clasp her small hand and put on the natural looking fake smile I learned from my master. I'm Kazami Yuji, good to meet you. 
イギリスマキナですよろしく Her voice is small and marked by a distinct lisp. Her hand is as tiny as her body, and it's not like that of a child, and it's hot like that of a child. I like dogs. What about it? I'm not really into the indecisive sort. I don't even hesitate when I need to come up with an answer, even more so when I have an important decision to make. Compared to failing without even trying, I'd rather take action even at the risk of a mistake. <laughs> Are you mocking me? <laughs> Then why'd you laugh? <laughs> I've heard answering a question with another question is a sign of stupidity. Got it, moron girl. What a troublesome woman. I don't feel like being late on my first day. I'm used to waiting.、Uh, I'll kill time sightseeing over there or something. I get that a lot. Well, I'll see you in class. Hmm? What? If it's something I can answer. Hmm? If you've got something to say, spit it out. No need to hold back. Nice. I don't understand the thought patterns of large women. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a quote right there. I don't understand the thought patterns of large women. <laughs> My master would probably say, if you don't understand by now, you never will. But my own thoughts are more along the lines of, even if I could understand, why bother? Well then. Having said that to Amane, I'm confronted with the fact that there are no sights particularly worth seeing here. There's easily an hour until the start of class. I've obviously woken up too early. Well, still better than being late, I guess. Might as well wait in the classroom. Right after I mumble those words, just as I begin walking down the hallway. <laughs> uh. I don't know if you're watching right now, Yememi, but uh, this, the, your favorite girl is coming up. The one you're excited for. <laughs> What the? As I'm making my way towards the classroom, the principal had described yesterday, I hear something resembling a scream. No, not a scream exactly. <coughs> the hell? Although it doesn't seem to be an emergency situation, I'm certainly a bit concerned by this sound. It's dramatically out of place in the otherwise quiet morning schoolhouse. For the time being, I decide to approach. When I peer inside through the hallway window, I find a still woman shouting in the direction of the blackboard. Judging from the fact that she's wearing a uniform, it would seem that she's a student here, like Sachi, Amane, and Makina. Apparently oblivious to my presence, she continues her routine. Warming up, Owari. Jatsugi. After deeply inhaling. Se no! Ai! Know 
to say to that. <laughs> All in one breath, she firmly lets loose a string of syllables familiar as a vocal tuning exercise. While staring at the memo pad in her hand, she awkwardly but forcefully rattles off phrases after one after the other. It seems like it'd be best to ask her what she's doing directly. This the broadcasting club? In response to my question, or more likely my entrance, the woman leaps up in shock and draws back a good three meters. Desk and chairs clatter dramatically in her wake. No, I might have been hasty to assume that from the vocal exercises. The drama club seems possible as well. You seem to be saying some kind of lines. Just as I'm getting ready to rephrase my question, the woman preempts me with her own. Me? Because I'm a Yuji. I'll be transferring here to as of today. Yeah. Nodding, I walk a few steps forward and stand in front of the woman. So, were you doing some sort of rehearsal after all? Sorry if I interrupted. Which is it? I don't quite follow, but if I start asking questions, she'll probably get even noisier. So I choose the path of least resistance. After I flop down on a chair, the woman mutters to herself in a low but perfectly audible voice. In contrast, she delivers her self-introduction with an artificial brightness. That's so. Initials MM, huh? Nobody said anything remotely like that. Do you want to be called a masochist that badly? Quite an energetic woman. She drops the subject and forges boldly on ahead. So, I was in this class I was What does that sort of mean? So, so I was in the class of the Fair enough. The woman's voice suddenly grows quieter. I wouldn't call myself an enthusiast. She clears her throat effectively. Uh, <laughs> 
なんかまずいこと言っちゃったかなテンプルではこれでいいはずなんだけどやっぱりさまづけとか言わない方がよかったのかもあーもうその辺のうん今のもう一回やり直 You want me to call you Mitru, yes? そ、そうよそれでいいのそれで She hums to herself and nods emphatically, apparently satisfied with this result. Next, she takes a colorful wafer of some sort of small container and crunches down on it vigorously. What are you, what are you eating? Uh, wasn't asking. I was just wondering what those were. That's so. From the way you were sho、uh, showing them off, I was pretty sure you wanted me to ask. うるさいわねあんたに見せるためにやったんじゃないわよあなんか今のうまくいった多分今のそうよね結構よかったよね案外私素質あるのかも I got a strange sense of deja vu from her phrasing just now What was it? One of those long advertisements they put up inside trains Since I don't ride, ride inside them often, the few I've seen stand out in my memory. Right, they reprinted this idiotic article from a woman's magazine about how to make men fall for you. Purposely treat them coldly at first in order to create a contrast for your affection when you make your move. So you're supposed to be a Sundari, I'm assuming. Mitru covers her mouth with her left hand and staggers backward in apparent shock. Her reaction is a bit puzzling, but I think I probably hit the bullseye. I see. I think I understand. You're playing a tsundere in an attempt to attract male attention, yes? But there's still some points I'm not clear on, like that hair. Why are you bleaching it? Please. A genuine blonde has a more natural tone. Not that artificial looking gold color. I've known a few. That's so. Next time I happen to visit America, remind me to pick you up some better hair dye. So, as I was saying, why bleach it? And that hairstyle is a little odd too. It's not one I see that often. The way what has to be. <laughs> what a line. Michiru begins to mumble her words. Under her breath, as if to enumerate the curse's power. That she has to describe the Sundari curse in the first person seems a bit strange, but pointing that out would only prolong this, so I leave it be. Mitru jabs out an index finger in my direction and. Twinter! <laughs> 
As she runs out of breath in grand style, the curtain finally drops on Michiru's one-woman show. The echoing of her ragged breathing is the only sound in the otherwise silent classroom. Exactly 30 seconds pass. It's tough being a tsundere. Got it. I'm not sure if that wasn't what she was looking for, or if she's just lost the will to go on. But Mitru glares at me while emitting a sound reminiscent of a malfunctioning industrial machine. Anyway, let's get along, Mitru. Yeah, it goes without saying, I plan to get along just fine on my own. It really isn't easy being a Suntere, is it? <laughs> Finally breaking down, Michiru begins flinging waste paper, permanent markers, and anything else lying around in my direction in an attempt to drive me off. Are you crying? S sorry, my bad. My attempt at an apology seems to only have fueled their anger, so in the end I decide a temporary withdrawal is in fact called for. Class is starting in another 15 minutes, but it should be fine. I'll just kill some time somewhere. Five minutes before the start of class, practically the moment after I re-enter the classroom, Amani and Sachi arrive. The Sundere from earlier is looking at me with a naked aggression, but noticing the arrival of the others, resuming the performance in question, she promptly calls out to them. The instant her greeting is returned, Michiru runs over noisily and shakes her hands in front of Sachi. それやめてって言ったでしょ。一郎様ってのでもこれはみちる様が絶対にそう呼べって言ったから。だだからあれはその冗談で。えっと一度物理フォーマットしてもう一回入れ直せない。ね、ね。みちる while glancing over in my direction for some reason desperately entreats Sachi. Amane, leaning on a desk, seems to be occupied with trying to hold in her laughter. Instant Michiru speaks. Sachi's tears abruptly vanish as if someone threw a switch. Michiru watches her cautiously, sweating heavily. Michiru staggers her way back to her seat. With all the virtual vir vitality of a limp rag. You feeling alright, Michiru Sama? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to give it a try. Michiru collapses weakly onto her desk. Makina's lisping voice. Sounds from the rear of the classroom. Seems like she might not be used to my presence yet, judging from the way she beelines straight for Amane. Amane hides herself behind her and steals glimpses at me. Hello. <laughs> A 
appreciate it, Michiru. Keep up the good work. Apart from the large woman, this bunch seems to present quite a variety of communication difficulties. Nothing but fantastically normal students here, eh, Principal? As if in response to my sarcasm with the chiming of the opening bell. The perfectly normal principal appears before my eyes. Hmm. Wait a second. There's only four. As we've arrived at the beginning of the school day, I notice a difference from the information I'd heard yesterday. Standing at the podium, the principal notices the irregularity at a glance. Her tone seems to be asking if anyone's familiar with the circumstances. Apparently, I'm not the only one with questions about our lone truant. You're strangely tolerant. From an open end window, the scent of the tide flows into the room. Perhaps because of the walls and steel fences surrounding us on all sides, it's not always easy to remember that this place is in fact close to the sea. In contrast to the breeze and the blue sky's in intima ah, intimations uh, of freedom, the gray of those jutting fences speaks of denial and rejection. While my classmates raise their voices energetically, I pass the time staring into the sky. School life, huh? ここが視聴覚教室です。すべての席にリスニングとヒアリングの機材が揃えられていて、語学学習にも適しています。Looks that way. I can tell from a glance that this place is pretty well equipped. Using the time after the homeroom period, I'm getting a small introduction to the school's facilities from Sachi. Normally this would be the principal's job, but she seems to be occupied with official duties, so I ended up getting another tour from our class rep. Which would make checking a movie out impossible, I guess. So, this is a man who has been in the past. Sachi smiles a bit wryly as she speaks. Most of this stuff is probably in that pamphlet somewhere, but Sachi's explanations are complete, comparatively to the point, clear, and easy to understand. It seems she's actually quite intelligent. Hmm. Looks like they weren't that sloppy on the casting after all. The school drama currently being broadcast. Having completed a general review of the school's facilities, Sachi's explanation comes to an end. Thanks, it was a big help. I guess so. Yeah, there's still a classmate I haven't met yet, after all. Ah, so this. 
Hearing my response, Sachi's brisk tone gives way to a hesitant mumble. Uh, no. What? After a brisk bow, she quickly runs off down the hallway. Did I trigger a death flag just now? I don't think there's a single person in the world who wouldn't worry after that kind of ominous foreshadowing. Well, that might be an overstatement. There are some pretty carefree people out there. I'm just not one of them. Seems like it would be best to be on my guard, or more so than usual. The light flooding in through the windows has shifted from overhead to my side. It won't be that long until the sun sets. After parting from Sachi, I walk the empty hallway alone. <laughs> walk a lonely road, lonely road. <laughs> Both My surroundings are very nearly soundless, thanks to my habitually quiet footsteps. However, inside the stillness, I sense a definite presence at my destination. She finally show up. I hear a faint sound from the interior of the previously silent classroom. With that confirmation, I slowly open the door. <laughs> the moment I enter the classroom, tension fills the air. Behind a window seat desk in the middle of the classroom, a chair rattles at its occupant turns to face me. My immediate impression of the girl, she doesn't appear particularly friendly. Yo. While it might not be the most polite first greeting, I call out casually as I approach in order to demonstrate my lack of malicious intent. Yo, what's up, soldier? Oh yeah, this is a girl you're excited for, right? Or did you get the shiny? Sakaki Yumiko, right? Her expression doesn't change. Now this shit is getting very good. <laughs> yep. Sitting on the chair, absolutely rock still, uh, she stares at, fixedly at me. I'm Kazami Yuji. I'm a new student here as of today. I come to a halt in front of her desk. So, I'll be your classmate as well, it seems. Girl, I'm excited for it. Uh, I never get shinies. <laughs> Pulling out a chair from the desk in front of her, I sit down. At the moment, we're about a meter apart. Nonetheless, the woman stares at me so tensely that she seems to be forgetting to breathe. Rather than staring, her expression could probably be uh, more accurately described as glaring. Almost one month without a single shot. God dang. Uh, sorry about your luck, man. Hope it improves soon. I wasn't able to introduce myself in the morning. Heard you would probably be around in the evening? I keep talking regardless, but no response is forthcoming. Maybe she's got a psychological problem with men, like Makina? But then again, she didn't try to run away when I approached her. Hmm. I change my position on the seat to face her directly. Straddling the chair, I lean forward slightly. The motion had closed the one meter gap between us down to about 70 uh, centimeters. I need to go back to Masuda. Yeah. I usually just stick to Masuda because it's easier, it's got better mods. <laughs> I'd like to at least confirm your identity. Hey! As if to declare her refusal to acknowledge my existence, the woman stands from her seat and briskly moves to exit the classroom. How about at least responding to me? I follow her immediately. The woman opens the classroom's rear door just enough t for one person to pass and tries to slip her way outside. Hey! Calling out again, I try to follow her through that gap. <laughs> In that moment, the woman forcefully slams the door shut. She clearly closed it knowing full well I was trying to follow. Her expression betrays surprise. Maybe she'd been expecting me to get my hand caught in the door or back off from having it slammed in my face. Instead, the door she'd attempted to slide across is firmly held open by my hand, an outcome she apparently hadn't been prepared for. You could have broken my hand, you know that? <coughs> Although she's the one who is trying to shatter my fingers, 
She's glaring at me like I'm the bad guy here. What exactly did I do to deserve this from someone I've just met? I'm just looking for an introdu- Opening the half-shut door, I take a step forward. She doesn't back down. Quite the greeting. I stopped the motion of her hand about five centimeters before its target. It isn't the most efficient block, but for the purpose of diffusing her reckless hostility, an easily comprehensible action seems necessary. I was expecting something of the sort, but you favor the classic slap to the face, I see. Maintaining my grasp on the woman's wrist, I stare her down at short range. As for the woman, she's staring right back, her eyes open wide with shock, completely still. Well then, let me ask you again. The strong orange... Oh wait, I have some good news. Oh, let me know, buddy. What's the good news? The strong orange glow of the evening sun illuminates the classroom. Are you Sakaki Yumiko? Her expression hostile as ever. The woman slowly opens her mouth. With an air of slight resignation, but clearly unwavering in her refusal of any re relation with me, she speaks. So, Daketo. Okay. Good to meet you. <laughs> As the evening sun fell behind a cloud, its light dimmed and the classroom filled with shadow. With the sound of Yumiko's breath and the faint roar of the waves from behind, beyond the walls, the curtain was raised on my normal student life. Oh, intro time. <laughs> wait, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> uh, wait, oh, no, I don't want to get banned, no. Oh, no, I think I made a mistake. Oh, I don't know how to skip this. I went to the doctor today, and I got weight, and I lost 16 pounds. Let's fucking go. That's epic, dude. I'm proud of you. I, uh, I hope, um... <laughs> I hope Twitch doesn't, uh, oh my, I, dude, <laughs> oh my god, Twitch please, Twitch summer, <laughs> but no dude, that's freaking awesome, I'm proud of you, like, for real though, oh my god, I, I just don't like it banned. No problem. Epic. And that is where I'm going to end it for today. Also, you should be fine if you're worried about it. Just don't save the VOD. Okay. I'm going to... Where's the... Where's the pause? Oh, right. Save us, huh? Yeah. So, that's our introduction. We've got to know all the girls. We've got to know the main plot. Um... I really want to thank everyone for coming by and stopping by, even if you only came for a minute. I really appreciated it. Um, I hope my voice acting wasn't too cringy, but yeah. Um, but yeah, just uh, we finally started the game. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, visual novels usually take a bit to uh, get things running. Uh, but I am going to... I think I'm going to raid um, this person, Hanada Rin. Uh, wait, no. How do I? Ra oh, there we go. Hanada Rin. So let me go ahead and 
終了するの分かったわ。But yeah, I really appreciate、uh, all of you for coming and、uh, just dropping by, even if it was just for a second. And thank you, Soldier, for sticking with me the whole time. I know my voice acting must have been cringy, so I really appreciate that. Better ingredients. <laughs>、um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, get this raid going. And amazing stream. Thanks for streaming. Hey, no, th thank you for being here, buddy. But、um, yeah. Let's go ahead and raid. How do, how do, I, how do I raid now? Oh, raid now. Okay.、Uh, let's go. Wait a minute. You know what? No, I want to use gold map first. Because if I can just mean look and try to. Oh, thank you, Mochi Boy, for the raid. I can use,、uh, I can use mean look. Raid Shadow Legends? Oh my god, I can't believe I just got Raid Shadow Legends.